थैंक यू सो द डेमो फॉर द टूडेज टॉपिक इज रिगार्डिंग हिप बोन इट इज़ अ लार्ज फ्लैट इरेगुलर बोन एंड इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री पार्ट सो आई बी मैंसनिंग अबाउट द थ्री पार्ट सो द हिप बोन ऑफ द राइट साइड ऑफ द the hip bone and the left side of the hip bone when it comes together along with the sacrum bone on the back side here the sacrum bone will be there and which forms the the pelvis now uh, the hip bone consists of actually three part right so that is ilium ischium and the the pubis so let's see the expanded part this is known as the ilium right above this is known as ilium and below this is known as ischium and this is known as the the pubis over here now वट वी हैव टू नो इज कहाँ से कहाँ तक फ्रॉम वे टू वेयर वी कैन सी एलियम प्यूबिस एंड द स्कीम दिस इज ऑफ्टू डेटर फॉर आई मैन और यहाँ पे देख रहे इसको बोलेंगे कंजॉइंट स्को पीबी क्राइमस सो फ्रॉम द कंजॉइंट स्को पीबी क्राइमस विद द हेल्प ऑफ द पेंसिल आई हैव ड्रॉन द लाइन विच पासिस थ्रू द स्टाबुलर नॉच और इज कैन सी इट इज वाई सेप प्रोजेक्शन सो इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ द द टू लिम्स दिस इज द अपर लिम ऑफ वाई सेप and which runs upwards uh, towards the ilio pubic area that is ilio pubic eminence right and uh, same how uh, below also i have drawn the line which runs towards the lesser sciatic notch so this is lesser sciatic notch so it divides the lesser sciatic notch into upper part and the lower part right so uh, with the help of this y shape bifurcation uh, the hip bone will be divided into three part above this is the ilium and uh, the medially that is known as antero medially this is known as the 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 pubis and posto inferiorly this part is known as the the ischium so these all are the three parts of the the hip bone right i repeat this is ilium this is known as ischium and this is the the pubis here now what we have to know is uh, how to hold the hip bone in anatomical position so for that can you see here this is known as the acetabulum acetabulum should be always facing laterally so that femur comes and forms hip joint here which is ball and socket variety of sinovial joint same how the expanded portion ilium should be facing always above and this obturator foramen here and this obturator foramen should be always facing anteriorly and uh, just medial to that this is pubis which should be always antero medial to the obturator foramen and ischium should be always posto inferior to the obturator the foramen so can you see here this is anterior superiliac spine and this is pubic tubercle so we have to hold the hip bone in such a position so that it should be always in the same coronal plane here both comes in the same coronal plane now let's know about three parts in detail so let's talk about uh, the ilium which consists of two ends that is known as the upper end and uh, the lower end so as i have mentioned near the acetabulum the junction between ilium ischium and the pubis takes place so this is the lower end which is form a part of the acetabulum same how upper expanded end which is thick to form a iliac crest so this is the iliac crest and which extends from the anterior superiliac spine this is anterior superiliac spine on the back side till the posterior superior iliac spine so this is posterior superior iliac spine and this thick portion is known as the iliac crest so let's divide the iliac crest into two half so this is known as the ventral two third and the dorsal one third part so ventral uh, two third again it consists of uh, the 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 outer lip on the outside can you see here this is the outer lip it consists of the inner lip so this is the inner lip and there is area known as intermediate area between the two lip and same how uh, the posterior or dorsal one third is divided into outer slope so this is outer slope and the inner slope now if i'll uh, trace again uh, the from the anterior superiliac spine nearly 5 cm behind the anterior superiliac spine you can see the tubercle here this is tubercle of iliac crest then uh, so we have done with the the upper end now uh, and the lower end now let's uh, know about the other borders that is known as anterior border and same how there is a posterior border and there is a Term known as medial border. So the ilium consists of three border. So let's trace the anterior border. So which extends from the again anterior superior iliac spine, right? So this is the right side of the hip bone. So this is anterior superior iliac spine. We will trace this downwards. This is the notch, and it comes towards the again the acetabulum. So this one is known as anterior border of the ilium. So if I'll trace it. what happens here uh, this is known as anterior superior iliac spine and below this is known as anterior inferior iliac spine and in between them there is a notch which comes and ends near the acetabulum 
same how we have the posterior border so which extends from the posterior superior iliac spine and again if i'll trace it downwards it runs towards the the lesser sciatic notch so this is lesser sciatic notch it means till the upper half of the lesser sciatic notch only below this it is known as the the ischium now uh, let's trace it this is posterior superior iliac spine this is posterior inferior iliac spine this is greater sciatic notch again this is known as lesser sciatic notch right so uh, these all are the structures which is seen near the posterior border right so we have the the two notch that is greater sciatic notch right so this is the greater sciatic notch over here so we will be knowing about the content which is passing through the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch later now uh, same how uh, we have the medial border right so, so this border is known as the medial border how we can say this is the medial border so for that if this is iliac crest that is ventral two third and the dorsal one third so between the junction between uh, the ventral and the dorsal part of iliac crest this the border which arises here is known as the medial border which runs downwards till the iliopubic eminence so this junction is known as the iliopubic eminence here now this medial border divides the ilium into two uh, surfaces this is known as sacropelvic surface below the entire surface and uh, above this is known as the iliac surface now again what we have to know here is uh, this anterior part of this medial border is also known as the arcuate line we will know it in detail later here it means there are three surfaces actually in the ilium that is known as the iliac fossa part and sacropelvic surface part as well as um, from the outer aspect there is a, a surface known as the gluteal surface so let's talk about the iliac surface sacropelvic surface and this is known as the gluteal surface now the gluteal surface actually is uh, uh, divided into so many areas say four area with the help of three gluteal line if this is greater sciatic notch so from the upper margin of greater sciatic notch the three line will arise right so can you see here we have uh, the three line that is known as the this is the posterior gluteal line which arises from the greater sciatic notch and ends uh, between the junction between uh, the the ventral two third and the dorsal one third well this is known as anterior gluteal line which arises from greater sciatic notch and ends near the tubercle of iliac crest here same how from the again from the greater sciatic notch again the line here that is done as inferior gluteal line which ends between anterior superior iliac spine and anterior inferior iliac spine here so these all are the three line that is done as inferior gluteal line same how the anterior gluteal line and posterior gluteal line the gluteal surface is divided into the four area that is for the first area between acetabulum and inferior gluteal line again between inferior and anterior gluteal line again between anterior and posterior gluteal line and behind the posterior gluteal line so we'll be knowing about the attachment later near the gluteal surface here now if i'll talk about uh, the two remaining surface this is known as iliac fossa the muscles which is getting originated from iliac fossa is known as the iliacus now we have the third surface that is sacropelvic surface so that is below the medial border so this is the the sacral surface where the sacrum bones comes and fit here and form sacroiliac joint which consists of two parts this is the iliac part or iliac tuberosity part and just ended to that we have the auricular surface so this is the tuberosity part and this is the auricular ear shaped auricular surface and below we have uh, the 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 pelvic part this is another ischial spine that is between the greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch which i have forgot to mention and there is structure which is crossing the ischial spine we will mention later now let's talk about the pubis bone so this is the pubis i have marked with the pencil over here I can you see here i have marked it with the pencil so this line which is passing through the acetabular notch and above also so this much portion is known as the pubis right so the pubis consists of the three part right so this is known as the body of the pubis same how above uh, we have the superior ramus and below this is known as the inferior ramus which forms conjoint scopubic ramus so this is body which consists of three surface so this is anterior surface on the back side posterior surface can you see here? this is the posterior surface and this is the medial surface of the 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 body of the pubis here this is anterior surface there are lots of attachment we will be knowing about the attachment later on the back side again the attachment of the muscles takes place now this is known as the medial surface here so medial surface of the right hip bone and the left hip bone the, that is the pubis part comes and joined here to form a pubic symphysis which comes under the secondary cartilaginous joint here right so these are the three surface of the 
the pubis. This is known as the, the upper border of the, the body part and this is known as the pubic crest here. I repeat this is the pubic crest and laterally it goes and ends near the pubic tubercle. So this tubercle is known as the pubic tubercle. Right. So this is all about the body part. Now this is known as the superior ramus. So the superior ramus consists of three surface and three border. This is known as pectineal line also known as the pectineal border. So this arises from this much is the pectineal line. So the, uh, this pectineal line arises from the pubic tubercle and just passes just behind the iliopubic eminence that is posterior part of iliopubic eminence and goes and attached with the arcuate line over here. So this is pectineal border or the pectin pubis. Now, there is a term known as obturator border or anterior border. So, this is known as obturator border which arises from the, the tubercle that is known as the pubic tubercle and goes towards the again acetabulum, right? And below this is known as the obturator border and this obturator border which is also forming the margin of obturator foramen. So, there are three borders. This is pectineal line or pectin pubis border. This is obturator border and again below there is a border known as the obturator border over here of the superior ramus somehow if this is triangular if i'll take a section it is triangular that's why there are three surfaces so this is known as the pectineal surface so that is between the the pectineal line above and entirely this is the obturator border so this surface will be known as the pectineal surface this is known as the the obturator surface that is between the obturator crest and the obturator border right now same on the back side this surface is known as the 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 pelvic surface so this is all about the three borders and three surface now if i'll talk about again uh, the inferior ramus so inferior ramus consists of the anterior surface and on the back side this is there is a posterior surface as well as which forms the two border that is known as anterior border and the posterior border so inferior ramus joins to form a conjoint iscopubic ramus here so this is known as the anterior border on the back side the posterior border anterior and posterior surfaces clear now this ischem is actually comma shape which consists of two uh, the part that is the body part and the ramus part which joins with the ramus of the uh, the pubis and forms a conjoint iscopubic ramus over here right this is conjoint iscopubic ramus here now uh, if i'll talk about the body which consists of two ends that is known as upper end right with the pencil I have marked here this much portion is known as the upper end which is forming the part of the acetabulum here. So upper end and below this is known as the lower end where the weight bearing area will be there, right? So the upper end and the lower end. Same how the body consists of the three borders and the three surface, right? This is obturator foramen and here there is known as the anterior border of the body of the, the ischium. So this is anterior border which is also forming the margin of obturator foramen, agree? This is the lateral surface where femur comes and attach here and forms a hip joint and this is known as the lateral border of the body part which is facing laterally same off from the medial aspect this is known as the medial border of the the ischium and which arises from the lower half of lesser sciatic notch this is lesser sciatic notch not the upper half lower half of lesser sciatic notch and this border is known as the posterior border of the the ischium here agree which runs towards the conjoint iscopubic ramus here now that's why I have mentioned about the three borders. I repeat, this is known as the anterior border, this is lateral border and this is known as the posterior border. Now there are three surface. This is known as the femoral surface or the lateral surface which is facing laterally. That is between the anterior border and the lateral border. Agree? So this is the lateral or femoral surface. Same how on the back side. Can you see here? This is known as the dorsal surface, also known as posterior surface. And from the medial side, this is the, the pelvic area. So we can see medial surface or the, or the pelvic surface. Now, uh, we have to know about the lower end, right? So lower end is, is comma shape, right? So this is the comma shape and uh, this is the area where hamstring muscles will attach. Let's divide this comma shape lower end part into the two area with the help of the horizontal line or horizontal ridge, right? So with the pencil, uh, can you see here, I'll draw a horizontal line or horizontal ridge which divides this lower end into upper quadrangular part. So this is upper quadrangular part and below the triangular part right so again uh, the upper quadrangular part uh, will divide this upper quadrangular part with the help of oblique ridge right we'll draw here the oblique ridge into a uh, two part that is supralateral part and infromedial part right same how 
the lower triangular part will draw the the vertical line over here which divides the lower triangular area into upper outer half and the low the inner half so this is about and this is known as the the ramus of the ischium which joins with the ramus of the inferior ramus of the pubis forms the conjoint ischio pubic ramus here agree so this is all about the the features that is the of the ilium ischium and pubis right we'll know about the attachment in the second half this is the greater sciatic notch agree I'm mentioning again here that is known as the posterior gluteal line. This is known as the anterior gluteal line. This is, this is known as the inferior gluteal line. This is the one area, second area, third area, and this is the, the fourth area. Thank you. Okay, uh, this uh, bone is known as the hip bone. So the two hip bone, uh, right side and the left side, comes together to form the pelvis. On the back side, there is a sacrum bone which forms the pelvis. So how to say that this is the right side of the hip bone or the left side of the hip bone. So for that we have to know the basic term this is known as the acetabulum and keep in mind this acetabulum should be always facing uh, laterally uh, so that uh, the femur comes and forms the hip joint over here. This is the three part ilium, this is known as the ischium and this is known as the, the pubis and this is known as the obturator foramen over here. And keep in mind that uh, this is known as the stabulum which is a junction between uh, the ilium above, the ischium uh, the below and this is a pubis. So now this acetabulum always facing laterally. So that uh, the if you see this is known as acetabulum. So this is known as the pubis which should be always facing anteromedial to the obturator foramen acetabulum and ischium always posterior inferior to the acetabulum and obturator foramen. This is how we can say this is the right side of the, the hip bone. So that is the side determination. Now we have to know how to hold in anatomical portion. This is anterior superiliac spine and this is pubic tubercle. So we have to keep in such a position so that uh, the pubic tubercle uh, and the anterior superior iliac spine comes in the same coronal plane and uh, this is how the pelvis is situated in our body and which indicates this is the right side of the, the hip bone. Thank you.